Hello world viewers, Swift Double here. I decided to do a review about the episode Between Dark and Dawn. <laughs> okay everyone, this was the episode that I didn't expect to see, because I mean Between Dark and Dawn, okay, when I first heard that it was going to be a Miss Celestia and Luna episode, like to take a bucket list vacation, Meanwhile, her Twilight and her friends struggles to take over the quest of the, their duties as by themselves. I mean, this is... <laughs> Boy, one of the best episodes, especially when between Celeste and Luna. I mean, we haven't been having any basic... We haven't had any particular particular episode based focus just on the on Celestia and Luna. Most of the series has just focused only on the other episode particular episode, but this is the first actual episode focused on Celestia and Luna ever since a royal problem in season 7. This episode were more basically focused on how Celestia and Luna suddenly wants to help after they did help in beginning in the, of the end when they suddenly realized they haven't done so much for themselves for the public. They had mostly spent any castle and the Twilight and her friends to take care of the most problems in basically any communities. But after they held Strong Starshroll in uh, with the problems every force when they expanded, they have wanted to help. And suddenly, when the episode begins in Sweet Apple Acres, this giant turtle or land turtle or Tortoise tries to start eating the apple trees, and that the main six having a plan to try to stop it, and at least Twilight have a plan to teleport it. But suddenly, when Luna Celestia appeared and done the same plan, which she had, but since so they appeared and made the same plan, did the same thing. What? Twilight had originally planned to do. And suddenly they appeared the rest of the episode, mostly in the beginning, seeing helping basically any particular small problems, like replace an old bridge in Ponyville, which has a hole in it, and some other smaller things in town. Most of the main six were getting tired about this. Like, suddenly they had, before all this, they took care of the problems that happened, but now the, the Celestia and Luna, they want to take part as well. I mean, they want to step in and help the public. And even if that it was suddenly is too overwhelming for the main six. And that the Twilight has your guess that could take um, some sort of vacation, or at least break from this. And it I can stand that they probably should take a break or at least a vacation. I mean, when was the last time they actually took a full time vacation? Just both of them. Probably like never. Well, they technically said, say, well, since Luna was on the moon for a thousand years, kind of some sort of vacation for herself, but not the same way, but not the same thing, but. It was like a vacation for her since Luna was away in a Celestia to Celestia take care of both her and Luna's duties. But doing so, they had to put Cele Twilight and her friends in to, to take care of their royal duties. Since ever since then, that they were actually going to take care going to be the next rulers after the season. Ever since episode 1, where Celestia announced they were retired. And before they went on to the, this, their vacation, we can see that 
Luna's reaction, telling Twilight she will have to take care of the rising and lowering moon and sun, everything will be gone. And Twilight's reaction is not what she expects. I mean, when was the last time Twilight tried that? I mean, the first time when she tried to take care of that, it wasn't not the same thing. I mean, sure. She tried to take care of that particular episode. Well, ever since we know for sure that. I mean, there is so much of this particular episode where we know for sure that. Much of this, this happened. Ever since. I mean, seeing her Twilight's reaction to say she will have to take care of this particular, this, I don't know, but it, that she will have to take care of all of this, anyway, all of this royal duties, and especially when Twilight, she had to take care of all of this. But especially in episode two, in season season four, episode two, Princess Twilight Sparkle Part Two, when we see that Twilight, Sunny, and Celestia and Luna are gone, and that she will have to take care of it, and I say that even that she has a problem. To raise the moon and sun by itself, but she had the problem. But she had the magic which from tricks from Cadence, Luna, and Celestia all together with her own magic, be able to control the sun and the moon. But she had a very much problem to even control it back then. But this time she had an amulet, like a broad brooch, which contained the magic enough for her to so that she can control it. But did she manage to control it? No, sorry. <laughs> she did. I mean, this was the probably only time when she didn't manage to control the moon. Like, Celestia and Luna were standing on the mountain hill, but they saw first the sun was going down and the moon rising at the same time and was next to each other. And seeing how they were still moving across the sky back and forward, I mean, well, I mean, Luna Celestia, did you ever consider that even with the amulet or this brooch with the the magic that so that Twilight could control the sun and the moon, do did you ever think that she would be able to control it? I don't even think so because. It would take her months, perhaps years, to even be able to master the sun and moon. Oh boy. But the song itself in this episode, a lot of little things. I have to admit, that song was really, really good. I mean, that was so whoa. <laughs> it was actually the first time we've seen... Celestia and Luna singing together ever since, um, I can't even remember. <laughs> but this particular episode between Dark and Dawn is just have its great moments. Even in the, in the song itself we can see one of the characters, Capper, from the movie, even Discord with Smooth, with Smooth, and also change things, but but seeing Capper in the series is actually the first we ever seen him. I mean, even there's a cameo about him seen in the background in this song. We've seen Capper finally ever since season eight. Ever since the movie came out and that season eight had premiered sometimes afterwards, I was just hoping can we see Capper in the season. Or perhaps in season eight, but no. But season nine, yes, finally we've seen Capper, one of the final characters. We've seen, not even seen Sky Star, the pirates, but 
at least one of the characters has been seen. But I improvised from this episode seeing how much Twilight and her friends are trying to at least work it out. <laughs> but one of the most funniest series scenes in this episode seeing Luna having this I don't say a knighted a like the like a style from the eighties and a Celestia like a gothic style. It will it not look as I expect. <laughs> I mean, this was really, really hilarious. I never expect to see they try this, but even seeing in this episode Twilight and her friends doing this some sort of gala for the swans in from Cantal Castle. Okay, when did the swans have their own? Had their own gala. Never know, something new appears every season. But having seen yet that Fancy Pants and and two other one of the other two of noble class working to help Twilight to, for this con for this gala. But Twilight real thinks that she can handle this by herself with her friends. But to the end, she realized when Fla when Fancy Pants informed them that the royal sisters never take care of all this, all the pre 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 all the pre 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 so all the preparations for the gala by themselves. They had actually a community to help them with this, which surprised me that while I did even expect that she that she believed. Celestia and Luna took care of all of those galas by himself. Okay, that was weird, but they realized the mistake. Even that we, we haven't seen Fancy Pants since episode 1 and 2 in this season 9. But over that, I was really surprised how much even this happened. And even later in the season, where Twil Celestia and Luna had this argument, what it's going to do in this particular, what they want to do in their vacation. But seeing it, how much they later on realized this argument between them was wrong, so they realized that. And even that later, when Celestia and Luna were standing on the on the hilltop side, have a view over Questia, and that Twilight and her friends ask Fancy Pants and many others for help to get here to fix this gala in time so nothing could go wrong, and that's how the swans not find their tails, in Meryl speaking. But otherwise, this episode was not the first one I expect. First one saying that. When I read that Twilight, that Luna and Celestia are going to take having, is going on vacation, and that Twilight and her friends is going to take care of all their royal duties, I didn't expect Twilight and her friends to be voluntarily to take care of this, and that I probably first believed that they were going to be ordered, or at least requested by Luna and Celestia, that they take care of the duties. While they have a vacation, ever since season one, when they Celestia did announced they will retire, and they have been chosen Twilight and her friends to be the next in line in ruling of the question. I was like, okay, Twilight that I can understand, but her friends, oh right, better, more than better, but seeing in this vacation, seeing how much fun Celestia and Luna had. But later in the vacation, seems how much they torn them apart in their in their relationship was almost like over. But they both realized this like they want to take it, want to do things on their own, which happened. But they both realized they had to forgive each other that they haven't had any vacation together for 
for a very, very long time, or perhaps never. So they probably would be the first vacation ever. So this episode would focus on Luna and Celestia as the first episode in a in a while since season seven of Royal Promo. But I have to agree that seeing them together, seeing a lot of lot of things, little things, and and seeing how much they enjoy the vacation together seems they needed this break actually and seeing how much they were willing to step down and help in the communities helping into the society with some either it's a small small things or the bigger things but since before season nine they never actually stepped in in the community to help in any sort of fights Ever, ever since Terrorek appeared and Discord came out along, Twilight and her friends took care of all of those things. Never, well, except for one time when Celestia tried to defend during a Cantot wedding, but that was the only time when she was defeated, easily by Chrysalis. But otherwise from that, we have never seen Luna and Celestia ever taking part of anything. Never. But this time, there was only we had seen them have been doing that. I just wonder, will they do it again before season 9 is over? Who knows? But I will say, between Dark and Dawn, it was an episode that not about that I did expect to see. The song was, was I have to say, the song is A++ great moment, seeing is not a other characters in the cameo, like Capper, Dragons, the Escort, the Flame, of the Flame Brothers, but I had to admit all of this, it was more deeper connection between Luna and Celestia on their vacation, seeing how they interact with each other even during a vacation and almost they had a fight but they always forgave each other and, and seeing how much trouble Celestia that Twilight and her friends had just for this gala for the swans, they realized ever since when they will be ready to take over Equestia, it will be not the same thing. They will be asking for help even if they will be the next rulers. So what will I say about Between Dark and Dawn as the rating? <laughs> well, I Probably say A plus 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 three pluses after this. This episode was perfectly, perfectly just right for the moment between Celestia and Luna as this episode. I had to admit it was a great episode. I couldn't couldn't ask for a more better episode and went down together. <sighs> Wow, this is just... <laughs> well, and uh, yeah, overall, I said, A++ rating for this episode, and the song was great. Even it was had some funny moments between the, the Celestia, Celestia and Luna's vacation, and the Twilight of Friends trying to take care of the gala. Both those things work out perfectly and this episode was just great. I mean it was great. Even though this probably was the second best episode in season 9 since Frenemies is the so far the top best episode in season 9. But if you fans of yours have your own opinions about this particular episode let me know in the comment section below. And as always subscribe, leave a comment and as always this is Switch Nobu over and out.